I want to bring in Elena Shirazi, uh, a News Nation correspondent who's with us, um, whose parents escaped uh, Iran and have uh, been involved in the opposition uh, to to the regime and to the Ayatollah. I'm wondering what you make of this. Leland, I mean, you said it before, this is all about a sort of control from the regime, right? They want to maintain the control, uh, not only, of course, in Iran, which is a big stark difference from the people who are living there, but of course, in the Middle East and the world as well. So we know that this is obviously very historic. It's the first time that Iran is not hiding behind their proxies anymore, and instead they're sending that direct message to Israel. And now Israel is responding to that. So we just heard from the IDF spokesperson a little while ago who says Iran has sent over, we've been reporting this um, for a long time now, 200 plus killer drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles towards Israel. So here's a little part of that first. So far, we have intercepted and are continuing to, inter to intercept dozens of attack drones as well as cruise missiles and ballistic missiles outside of Israel's border. A number of Iranian missiles fell inside Israeli territory, cause causing minor damage to a military base with no casualties. Only one little girl has been hurt. With our allies and partners, we are operating at the at we're operating at full force to defend the state of Israel and the people of Israel. We know that Iran also has one of the biggest ballistic missile arsenals in the entire Middle East. But for how this escalates, Leland, that obviously remains to be seen. That's something that a lot of people can't really pinpoint. Is this just a warning from Iran? Is this something worse? But now all eyes, of course, are on how Israel is going to respond to this. Leland. Yeah. And one might think that freeing the Iranian people from the Iranian regime could be the very best thing that could come uh, out of this. Um, help us understand, again, what what the people of Iran are hearing about tonight, because that's important. So actually, a few hours ago, I got to speak with someone. He lives inside of Iran. He asked us to censor his voice and as well as, um, you know, his uh, his face. He doesn't want any information out there about him. Uh, Leland, I know you lived in that area. You were talking about that as well. So there's really a big sense of fear in the entire country. They just don't want any information out there. And that's kind of the discrepancy between apps between the people as well as the government and the regime right now. But during my interview, that Tehran citizen told me that the sense on the ground there is that Iran is simply sending a message with their response saying, don't mess with us. He tells me there's also concerns about Israel's retaliation in return. So listen to just a little part of that. So you think that they want to send a message. Iran wants to send a message, but they don't want to involve <clears throat> themselves into a full-blown... They war. cannot. They don't have the support uh, of their people. They have the experience of eight years of war after the revolution. And during that time, it was the people that uh, handled the situation. They, uh, it was the people that uh, sacrificed the lives of their sons and children and uh, lost uh, many of their... Um, friends and families in war. And that's how usually wars are done. You need manpower. And I don't think uh, Iranians have uh, manpower. And again, Leland, that's sort of the discrepancy between, he was saying the manpower. Uh, he was telling me that even inside universities, they're teaching some of these Iranian men sort of uh, what to do going forward in the military, sort of the dis differences between America and Iran and the Middle East, sort of training them. But there isn't sort of that sense that the people are on board with what Iran is doing. And there's that discrepancy as well. He actually told me that today uh, he was out in the marketplace. People were just acting business as usual, but the, morale, the morality police in Iran was actually sort of paroling the streets. So there was that sense of anxiety there. But again, uh, that disconnect um, from the people on the ground there. You just mentioned my parents, they immigrated um, from Iran during the 1979 revolution. So, um, you know, they've been through a lot of what some of these people are going through right now as well. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.